All right, what is up guys? Today we're going to be talking about the 7.2 update, what they've changed, what they've fucked, um, and everything in between. Um, we're, we're only going to be focusing on the helicopter side of the update. Um, there's plenty of other YouTubers to watch if you want to go get a more in-depth um, full update you know, walkthrough. But I'm only going to be focusing on the helicopters as not a lot of those people are going to give more than a glance at the helicopter um, fixes and new bugs and new fucks. Basically, I'll, I'll read through the patch notes. Um, these are all of the patch notes that involve the helicopters. There's over 100 patch notes of what they fixed um i found five portraying to the helicopters uh the first one being that they fixed an issue where projectiles from the helicopter mounted mg3s appeared to be coming from the wrong locations which you know it's just a visual bug or something like that but good fix um then they fixed an issue with the tlf uh1 H helicopter where crashing the helicopter upside down did not damage the hole. Again, another good fix. Um, a lot of players could have used that to their advantage um, to save their helicopter, say if their engine got shot out or their tail rotor went down and they just bounced their fucking helicopter off the ground. Um, Third fix was that they fixed an issue with the USMC UH-1Y helicopter where the cockpit, no penetration mesh, didn't fully protect the pilot. So that's where you're going to see pilots getting shot out of helicopters. Um, they potentially fix the mesh around the pilot so that the pilot can no longer get shot out on the UH-1Y. Um, there's still a couple other helicopters that I've been shot out of. Um, I don't know if it's due to the mesh issue or if it's something else entirely. Um, now I'm gonna go past the fourth fix that they did for helicopters because I wanna go more in depth on that. But the fifth fix is that they fixed an issue with the TLF UH-1H helicopter rotor rigging and nav ball. So that's mainly just gonna be a visual uh, a visual fix in the cockpit for the pilot. Um, now, back to number four, is that they fixed an exploit with helicopters where binding multiple inputs to an action could let the helicopter rotate faster. That is an exploit that I was personally using and that a lot of other pilots were personally using and I'll show you guys what that looks like right here. If you go into your controls helicopter, that would be binding a secondary or an alternative button to your yaw keys to let your tail rotor be more effective. Um, I'm not a big fan of that fix. If they... I'll, I'll hop into training so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Actually, I don't want to do that one. Let me go to the USMC so that you can better visualize um, everything that it's, or the, the speed, I should say. Let's go USMC. We will use the Marines helicopter for this. Um, and I will show you that that fix is honestly just a nerf for helicopters. It's not fixing anything. It is more just nerfing the abilities of the helicopters and the workaround that us pilots in the pilot community have come up with to fix another issue with the helicopters.
Now, the double binds already wouldn't have been effective in Jensen's. I've tested it out many times before this update, long before this update. The double binds did not work in the Jensen's training. This was as fast as you could ever turn a Huey, even with the double binds, would be this fast. And that is just how I'm turning in Jensen's. Double binds wouldn't have changed it. Double binds wouldn't have done anything to that. Now, to show you that I'm only using one key, I'm not using my mouse at all for this. This is just going to be my keyboard. Other than obvious mouse movements, I'm not going to be using my rudder keys on my mouse, even though I still have them bound. Um, this is something that you're no longer going to be able to do in a real game, and that is just fly backwards. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but this just shows you how much more effective your rudder is in Jensen's and the offline version than it is in the online version. There's a lot of tricks that you're going to be able to do in Jensen's now that you're not going to be able to do in a real game. Uh, that being said, I would not recommend flying in Jensen's at all. Other than the online Jensen's, obviously, but offline, I would not recommend flying in. Um, which is going to bring me over to issue 2 with the new update. Which would be the actual layer selection when you're in the offline Jensen's. You can no longer select certain factions to be on the layer. You just get stuck with whatever OWI has on that layer. So, you know, if you wanted to go to Yeho Raz V1, it would be two factions there. It's always going to be those same two factions. There's no way for you to change them on the offline client. Which if you were trying... Would, it's a major issue if you are trying to get screenshots of certain vehicles on certain maps or, you know, whatever. You can no longer come here and practice with certain helicopters or Advanced certain vehicles. Secure. Our mission is to secure all objective areas. Move out. The same is true with any other map. Advance and secure. Push out and secure all objective areas. There is no way to select the actual factions you want. There is no map voting on the offline Jensen's um, or the offline servers. There is no, they don't have the, uh, the old layers in at all either. You now only have upwards of two, maybe three RAS layers on Jensen's. Um, that's going to bring me to, to issue number two, is that now helicopters on RAS layers have a six-minute timer. This is the initial spawn timer. This is going to be slowing down a lot of gameplay. You're not going to be able to hot drop halfway across the map or towards the second point. But that being said, you're not going to be able to get your troops spread out as much as you would be able to with the helicopters. Now, let's say you're in the U.S. Army faction and you have the motorbikes or the quad bikes. You're now going to be getting mid-map or further then the helicopters are going to be able to by the time that they spawn in. Um, because now the helicopters don't even spawn in until two minutes after staging phase ends. They're going to be taking off roughly two and a half, three minutes after staging phase ends. That is going to give plenty of time for 
pretty much anybody to get middle of the map and get ready to ambush a helicopter. Now, why that's bad? That is bad because the helicopters now also have a 10 minute respawn timer. So when your helicopter gets shot down, not only <laughs> do you lose the same five tickets, you now have to wait an additional four minutes for your helicopter to spawn back in. Now, I was playing a layer last night where there is one helicopter on my team and it had a 20 minute spawn delay at the start of the game. So I sat there, waited for 20 minutes for my helicopter to spawn in. And let's say I got shot down on the first run because obviously the enemies are going to be set up already. I now have to wait another 10 minutes. That is half an hour gone for five minutes of flying. This is obviously not going to be appealing to any squad pilot or anybody wanting to be a squad pilot. This is going to completely destroy their pilot community in the game. Now, th these are all just my opinions, but obviously I'm still on the game. I'm still playing. But <laughs> um, I, I don't know how much more <laughs> I can deal with because they nerfed the helicopter maneuverability. They... Um, nerfed the spawn in timer they nerfed the respawn timer although the only good thing that they did do was change the gun angle they changed the gun angle and some other graphic issues that's about all i've noticed supposedly they fixed something to do with helicopters flying over high density areas but who knows if they actually did or not i was flying last night and i was still feeling just as many stutters as i was before the update anyways um it's probably going to be it for my rant hope you guys enjoyed my two cents